The internship here makes a whole lot of difference. The moment you've always imagined. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Napoleon Hill did say, cherish your visions and your dreams, for they are the children of your souls, the blueprints of your ultimate achievement. The practice of medicine can change your life like it did mine. It's no more on becoming a doctor. It's now that I am the doctor. So welcome to my channel once again. First, I think I would like to say Merry Christmas, of course, and also a Happy New Year in advance. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Gaspar Kutokin, and I make videos which are focused on healthcare professionals, whether you're a student or you're currently practicing as a doctor, a pharmacist, a nurse, or any of the allied health fields. Now, this is my story for the last one year practicing as a medical doctor in Nigeria. I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, you step out each day praying for the best, but expecting the worst because you really can't tell what the turnout of the day will be in terms of the patient's demise or other sad things that you may encounter during your day. One of the highlights of my year has been giving grace to those who I find on my path who are still learning. I say this because I remember when I just started internship and how it used to be difficult and perhaps even scary at times when I had to set IV lines or do some procedures on some patients. And this has made me become more patient with those who I find on my path who are learning. Whether it's my barber who makes a mistake with my haircut, or perhaps I enter a vehicle whom the driver for one or two reasons is not as professional as one would expect him or her to be. In those moments, I've learned how to just take a step back and remember when I was learning and patients had to give me that trust sometimes, making one or two mistakes or procedures that can be very painful. This has been one highlight of my year. So as you journey along in life, give grace to people, be patient to people, be kind to people. This is something that I have definitely learned this year. I've also learned to be very careful and very cautious. You know, in this profession, hazards are everywhere. And most times, really, you really can't tell whom is the patient who has a disease, whether known or the primary case for a potential heartbreak. I remember one time when I pricked myself, you know, with a needle while trying to establish an IV access for an infant. The infant just mysteriously, you know, made a kick and I was already into the vein body needle pulled back and just pricked my other finger and the scare that came with you know potentially having to take post exposure prophylaxis and all of that so i've really learned to be very cautious no matter how pretty or fine or innocent even that baby looks you have to watch out for yourself as a healthcare professional this instance when i was called to a patient in the morning it was my pediatrics posting and the patient clinically was in shock and also rbs done with hypoglycemic and the patient was having seizures. Now, these are three main issues that can, you know, take the life of that infant. So I reached out to my chief. This is the situation on ground and there was no IV access. We had the nurses just standing around watching, okay, what's next? And you know, typically for children, sometimes getting their veins can be very difficult. And I knew I had to do something. I tried the first couple of times, it didn't work, but I had to keep trying. And eventually I got a vein. Now that was a learning point for me. and. It just made me realize that no matter the situation you're in, you might think yourself as a young doctor, but at the end of the day, you are a doctor. You need to have that confidence to be able to stand in the face of situations that can take the life of a patient, even in the absence of those whom you would have otherwise relied on if they were physically present at that point in time. And I've also had to take other calculated risks throughout my stay so far you know, as an intern. Sometimes the people you want, like I said earlier, to be physically there and not there, not because they don't want to, but before they come, something bad could have happened. I've learned to stand up for myself this year more than ever before. In this profession, it's sad to say that everyone, or maybe almost everyone will throw you under the bus at the slightest chance of a potential litigation or a problem arising from the treatment given to a patient. This includes nurses, this includes doctors, fellow house officers, you know, sad to say. So I've learned to stand up for myself. I've learned to defend myself. I'm not going to watch myself being lied, you know, about or someone saying something I didn't do 
or saying something I did, but in a different way. You know, sometimes I see my seniors being shocked when they either try to push a blame on me during world rounds and I stand up and I'm like, no, that's not how it happened. That's not how I record it. So it's something that I've learned beyond the walls of the medical profession, living externally as well. I've learned to really stand up for myself and not take the bullshit or the crap that people try to randomly pull up on me sometimes. And this is something that you will learn as well as you journey through medical practice. I've also learned that to be great requires a ton of discipline, responsibility, hard work, and everything that comes with it. This year alone, I've taken two courses that lasted about six months. I started a YouTube channel that is growing, I'm founding an NGO that is in its early phase. This coupled with being the medical intern president at my training center and also carrying house job alongside this. Not to talk of staying, you know, alive and aflame spiritually. Now it takes a lot, it takes a lot. I've had to let go of movies this year. I've only watched movies on three occasions and these were in groups. Either the one we had, you know, as House of Isas, like a movie night and two other occasions. And it was a sacrifice I knew I had to make this year. Sports as well has been on a very low radar for me and other time wasters, Twitter, social media has really been limited. I would only use them because I have to communicate or because I have to post stuff that will either benefit people or I myself, I will have to read stuff that will benefit me. So I've realized that keeping tabs on your goals and aspirations and not allowing medicine take your life away from you would require a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, a lot of focus. And it's something that I would encourage you to understand early on before you delve into medical practice. Sometimes the pathway to healing requires pain. This is something that I've come to learn. For someone who used to have anxiety on behalf of patients before, you know, I would carry out procedures, not just because I felt uncomfortable, because I was imagining the pain the patient would go through. Now, this doesn't negate the fact that you have to make your procedures as comforting as possible, but I've come to realize and understand that sometimes the path to healing requires one to walk through pain. Surgeries, assisting procedures, doing major procedures myself, it has just become a foundational truth. So we have to push through the pain barrier sometimes to get patients to the point where they actually experience healing. Stamina. I've had to develop mental and physical stamina this year like no other. You know, I found myself raising my voice on patient relatives sometimes, either when I'm stressed, I've worked for long hours, or perhaps unknown to me, maybe I'm getting hypoglycemic, you know, and I find myself more agitated and angry. And I've really learned to step back in the last couple of months. Once I find myself in that position where I'm about to raise my voice or shout at people while I'm doing my work, I know, okay, I shouldn't be projecting my stress on these persons. These persons are innocent persons. You get physically, let's not talk about it. Having to do ward rounds, it's almost as though you're touring the whole hospital sometimes. For those who would be probably have done their internal medicine posting, you can completely relate to this. You're going everywhere, all the nooks and crannies of the hospital, you'll find yourself there. Physically, it has been a lot. Some days I wake up as early as 4 a.m. to go and do pre rounds. And then I'm coming back by 10 p.m. after finishing post round. Particularly in the last two months, it has been a lot of work. So the practice of medicine has increased my mental and my physical stamina, no doubt. I've also learned not to take the trust of people for granted. As you practice medicine, patients will trust you with information that they will tell no other person, both the ones you ask for and the ones you do not ask about. Patients would also trust you with their bodies. It's left for you to do the honors of making sure that everything that they tell you remains confidential and also you treat them with dignity and respect in their most vulnerable and perhaps even in their most deplorable states. Confidentiality is non-negotiable and treating people with dignity and respect is also non-negotiable. I've had highlights of my year so far. I had a very fulfilling moment in pediatrics when a young boy just ran into me and embraced me. It took me about five to 10 minutes. I was thinking, where did this young guy know me from? And then I realized that during one of my calls, the emergency was chaotic. And I just looked at the boy and he cried out to me and he was like, doctor, help me. At that moment, I felt something in my heart, which I cannot describe. I guess maybe that would be compassion. And he had this carpal pedal spasm. So 
I realized that this has been ongoing for hours, even prior to presentation. And you can imagine all the anaerobic processes as you know, occurring, lactic acid accumulating, and the pain that that child was in. So I quickly got calcium gluconate, gave him a stack dose, you know, placed him on maintenance therapy. And lo and behold, in a couple of minutes, I saw his fingers, you know, the feet and everything just returned back to normal. And he was like, thank you. And in a few minutes, he slept off. So days later, he realized, he recognized my face, and he just ran towards me as soon as he saw me. That was one highlight of my post. The woman who had just delivered twins and I checked her BP that night, so I didn't know and her BP was 270 over 130. And I didn't know if I should start crying or I should start laughing because I mean, she seemed apparently okay. Apart from one of the features of hypertensive emergencies, she just complained of doctor, I'm having a headache. And I said, okay, let me just check your BP. I sat down there for a couple of hours and, you know, stabilized the BP, tried to calm her down, relieve her anxiety and all of that. And just some days back, there was a patient who came with chronic kidney disease and the husband had been running up and down. And it just occurred to me that this man can just have a stroke with this kind of stress. Why not check his BP? And I checked. Blood pressure was 180 over 100 millimeters of mercury. I had to tell my chief and I'm like, okay, you'll go to GOPD in two, three days time after the Christmas holiday, but we have to start you on antihypertensives right about now. And I had adverted a potential stroke for that kind of patient. These are moments of the practice that are literally priceless. This is the part that money cannot pay, you know. I've had quite a number of positive comments during my stay in the teaching hospital. There's a part where I would really thank God and be grateful for how my medical school went. I remember in pediatrics, you know, most persons would say, I'm like, oh, this should be your second or third posting. And I'm like, it's my first posting. And I remember one of my senior registrars asking me, are you the first born? Ah, why come you look like you're so responsive? And then she just said it one day, said like, you're very, very smart and asked me about if I was going to be taking the USMLE and I'm like, no. I know the conversations just went like that. Or so after my presentation of pediatrics and I was given an invitation to come into the department for residency training and got commendations on everything about the presentation, the slides, the answers to questions and all that. Moving on to ONG, I had my reg, you know, send me a text after the posting. After my last day in the department, uh, it was, you know, nice working with me. I'm a man of excellence and all of that. You'll see some of the charts, you know, on the screen right now. And those moments were fulfilling to me to know that my work counted, my work mattered. Now, no one is irreplaceable, but one thing that I've always desired as I go through my house of training is to earn the respect of my seniors. I don't really care much about being liked, you know, or maybe being favored specially. But if I earn the respect of my colleagues, my seniors, those are things that matter to me. And even in the external world, it remains my goal everywhere I go to earn the respect of those who are ahead of me. I've made new friends and I've met amazing people. Coming into a house job, I had some kind of cold feet because I mean, I had amazing friends in school that I'd spent a couple of years with and I was wondering, maybe I should just go into my shell in this place and not put myself out there and just, you know, keep up with my old friends. But I really met cool people here who have stood by me, who have encouraged me, who you know, we bonded together and all of that. And it has made the journey more worth it. So this is a shout out to my friends from university, my friends currently doing house job. You all make the journey worth it. This is something that you should look out for also as you journey through the medical profession. Watch out for good people, be a good person and make friends with people that will contribute to your life posit positively in one way or the other. You can do your best and still lose. This is one sad part about the job. Sometimes I've gone the extra mile for patients, either at the emergency points, loaning blood in their numbers and the patient will still go. Or even sometimes during the wards, during calls, doing CPRs, doing everything to make sure a patient pulls through but it doesn't just happen. It's one thing that I've realized in life. You can do your best and everything will still go wrong. You have questions that you may never get answers to and you just have to, you know, move on. It has also made me learn the importance of money, one, and also power. Now, when I say power, I talk of spiritual power. There are some patients that have seen that money is just a challenge. If they have money, that medical email will be gone. But there are others whom I really just realized that what this person needs is divine healing. These have been learning points for me as I've journeyed through the last couple of months as a medical doctor. Now, the journey hasn't been perfect. Sometimes I'm overworked, I am stressed, 
and not to talk about the pay in Nigeria, we are significantly underpaid. That's the truth. It's a simple truth. You're not paid based on hours. You're not paid. It's fixed, irrespective of how that month, you know, goes in particular. But there are moments of the job that makes it what it's like I have talked about. So I'm not trying to paint a perfect picture. There are sad parts of the practice, especially in the tropics in a setting like this, but there are other parts of it that makes it what. Being a doctor is not a day's job. It's an experience of a lifetime. It's one privilege I would never take for granted. I'll say that again, being a doctor is not a day's job, it's an experience of a lifetime and it's one privilege I will not take for granted. This is not a call for you to go to medical school or to consider the medical line of practice. This is not an invitation to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I just really wanted to tell you the story of my one year in summary in a couple of minutes to just give you an insight into the benefits of being a doctor. Thank you if you watched till this point in time. There's so much I want to share over the years as you know, I grow in the medical line, both for medical students and for medical doctors. So if you find out that you want to journey with me, you're welcome. Otherwise, I'll see you whenever.